Okay, you can turn in your Bible to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. We're going to talk today about the poison of bitterness and how there are a lot of lost people that are very bitter. They don't like Christians. They don't like preachers especially. Um, but how that, that bitterness can actually come back and start to affect your life as a Christian. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 and 15. It says here, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. The key part there is in the end part of verse 15, the second half there, lest any root of bitterness spring up and trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. It's an old saying, misery loves company. It's very, very true. And you'll have people that get bitter about something and they start to spread that and spread it and spread it and spread it. Now, if you are here, you obviously know, you know, if one of, you're one of my patrons and things, one of the friends of this ministry, you know about all the negative stuff that's put out against me. Um, there have been people that have put out a video or two and then they go their way. There are other people that it is the purpose of their life to try and see me kicked off the internet. There's some very bitter people. Uh, just this past week, I had to kick a guy off this Jason guy, whatever, from Australia, and kicked him off. He's putting, you know, unlisted videos, sneaks into Patreon, Patreon, takes my unlisted videos, and puts them on publicly, puts the link to them and things. Uh, and then, and, you know, and I saw the guy's name, and I kicked him off. I blocked him, and I came in, and I said, hey, you know, you're, you need to take this down, or you're, I'm going to have to report you. You know, this is not Christian what you're doing. And he came out with another, took the video down and came out with another video saying that it, I lied and he was never part of Patreon. I mean, these people are getting desperate as the whole thing. They're bitter. But what's been happening is their bitterness is starting to rub off on me. I'm going to be talking about that in this study today. You can go back to the book of Job, chapter 7. Kind of brings to mind the thing of the our military here in America. I don't know about other mil militaries, but our military here in America has been using depleted uranium, uh, DU rounds, they call it. And uh, my wife had a little bit of experience with that. And uh, I know a lot of people in the military have. And we're not going to get into all the science behind why you would use radioactive nuclear waste in ammunition. Uh, I'll just say that if you heat it up and it's a metal core within a larger lead case bullet or copper jacket, whatever, and you shoot it at something and that and you can get that core, that depleted uranium core to heat up, it'll go right through, you know, three inches of solid steel kind of a deal. Just cut through it like a hot knife through butter. Um, but then you get it when it hits and it explodes and you get the fine particulates of radio radioactive nuclear waste all through the air. Well it's killing the enemy, but then when our soldiers go in there, it's killing them too. They're becoming infected with it. Not to mention the people that are loading it into the airplanes or whatever else that are handling the DU rounds. And there's a whole bunch of stuff out there on the whole depleted uranium scandal. Um, you can watch the uh, documentary Hidden Wars of Desert Storm if you want to know more about the whole thing. But it's, it's a good picture of bitterness. Bitterness goes in and it explodes and it starts to defile many. It doesn't only get the enemy, it also can come back on you, in other words. Job chapter 7. Here's a guy that struggled with a little bit of bitterness. Job chapter 7, verse 11. Therefore I will not refrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Did you know that bitterness and complaining go hand in hand? And I find it interesting there too. I will not refrain my mouth. There's, uh, there's times when you need to shut up as a Christian. When you need to just kind of you want to say something, you, you want to rebuke or you want to attack somebody because they've attacked you, sometimes you need to just be quiet. Now, you don't have to be a doormat or anything, but there are times and places you shouldn't say anything. You should just let the Lord handle that whole thing. And I myself have been guilty of not doing that sometimes. You know, I try to go out in my own uh, power, my own strength and fight. It's not the way to do it. Go next to Job chapter 9, but this thing of complaining and bitterness. Again, you start to get angry about a ministry and whatever else, and you start to complain about it. 
um, it can lead to bitterness. And you can start spreading that to other people. You've got to watch out for that. Job chapter 9, verse 16 through 18 says, If I had called and he had answered me, yet would I not believe that he had hearkened unto my voice. For he breaketh me with a tempest and multiplieth my wounds without calls. He will not suffer me to take my breath, but filleth me with bitterness. Wait a second here. He's blaming his bitterness on God? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, what's he doing? He's foolishly charging the Lord. At first, he's back in chapter 7, he's saying, I'm not going to refrain my mouth. I'm just going to let this come out. Hey, you know, I'm getting bitter here. Chapter 9, it's his fault. God's fault. He's the one that did. He's, he's doing this stuff without calls. He's bringing this stuff into my life. He's letting these people mess with me. He's doing this. He's doing that. It's, it's God's fault. Hey, if it, okay, I, I'll admit I got some bitterness issues, okay? But it's God that did it to me. Yikes. I mean, Romans 8.28 wasn't written at the time that Job was alive. Don't get me wrong here. You know, for we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. That's Romans 8.28, if you don't know. That wasn't written at the time of Job, but the principle is still there. God knows what he's doing. Do you trust him? Yeah, but he, he let this stuff happen to me, and, 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 and you know, I'm getting better. Your bitterness is going to start to spread to other people, too. Many can be defiled by your bitterness. I'm going to keep talking about this. Got some more things to say. Job chapter 10, verse 1. My soul is weary of my life. I will leave my complaint upon myself. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. He's fully into it. I mean, he is committed to his bitterness, let me tell you. Go to Job chapter 38. Most of you know this, but we're going to go here for people that are newly saved or, you know, not familiar with what the whole book of Job is about. Um, the book of Job shows, is the greatest book in the entire Bible to show the dealings in heaven over someone who's righteous. The Lord will brag on you. The devil will say, yeah, but you're protecting them. Let me do something in their life. And the Lord will say, okay, just don't hurt them. Don't kill them. Don't this. Don't that. The Lord will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able to bear. You see, the Bible says in the New Testament there. But you get to see a view into the inner workings of heaven and the fact that the devil is subservient to God. He has to come in and present himself with all the other sons of God, the angels there. He has to come and stand there and... and you know, roll call, you know, and you step forward, you step forward. What are you doing? Hey, Satan, your turn. Step forward. What are you doing? You know, it's a great book of the Bible. I remember hearing years and years ago, uh, some guy, you know, brother told me he visited some Babel building someplace, and the hireling that was there actually stood up, pastor, you know, stood up and he said, I don't believe that the book of Job is authentic because God wouldn't do this. God wouldn't allow this to, to a righteous man. So I don't believe in the book of Job. I'm not going to ever read from it. <laughs> Okay, but uh, here's what happens. The Lord allows this thing to happen and specifically has it written down for us so we can see those times when bad things happen in your life, when the Lord allows the devil to attack you, there's a reason for that. Job chapter 38, verse 1 through 3. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. And then the Lord goes down through and asks him question after question after question after question. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the Lord? Where were you when I did this? Did you do this? Did you? Can you make that over there? Can you make those trees? Can you make this? Can you, you know? He's putting Job in his place. I mean, it is rough. It is rough. I never went through half of what, what Job went through, you know, leaving, losing your children and everything that you've had and everything else, that'd be rough to go through. But I have been through some rough times. And there are times I don't refrain my mouth. And I start to get a little bit better. I start, I don't, I just don't understand why, Lord, what is Lord, what are you doing, Lord? I don't understand. 
Then you get the whole way through it and you get to the end and you look back and you say, oh, thank you, Lord, for what you've done. And I, now I see why you didn't let that happen back then. I've told this story before in another sermon or two. I, didn't, I don't know if I told all the details of it, but um, last year, actually, about this time, um, just about a year ago, almost exactly, um, we were looking into the possibility of getting a mortgage, which I'm very much against, but I was in a really desperate situation with our property situation and a bunch of other stuff. And uh, so, you know, I looked into it. We were praying about it. Lord, what do you want? The whole deal. And we went, we got pre-approved at, at a, our bank. And uh, yeah, you know, no problem. They approved us, pre-approved us for a certain amount and the whole deal and everything else. And uh, we went and we looked at a place up north of here in Ashland, Maine. And uh, it was a old house. It was kind of a small, I think it was, it wasn't very big. I think it was about 900 square foot house. And then it had an old um, log cabin on the property that needed a lot of work. And then an old, another log structure that they were using as a ski lodge. And it was not, we're, we're talking a ski ski lodge here, maybe 20 foot wide, 24 feet long. And they would do cross country skiing on this property. And, um, and uh, then, you know, they would come in there and have hot chocolate or whatever else, just kind of hang out and things. And so we went there and, um, and looked at it and we thought, hey, this is gonna be great. You know, really pretty area up there and everything. And, this, this is going to be neat. And yeah, okay, we, we put an offer on the thing and the whole deal and went to the bank and they said, okay, we're going to start the paperwork and uh, came back and they said, actually, we can't give you the loan. Um, and they cited a couple of things. doesn't matter what all it was, but it fell through. And I just was just stunned. You know, I don't understand what you're doing here, Lord. I mean, we've been praying for a while and we've been through all this stuff and whatever else and you know, I was going to just, we were looking about land and I thought, no, I don't want to do the land thing. Um, you know, I just want to get a house for once that I don't have to go and build something on bare land and the whole deal. And uh, so the realtor we were dealing with and he said, well, you know, banks can be kind of finicky. So he said, I'll tell you what, um, why don't you go through maybe a credit union or some kind of a actual mortgage company or whatever. So I started to kind of pursue that and... Um, and again, you know, we, uh, um, you know, went through that and it was looking like, okay, we can get a mortgage. So uh, we, you know, called up the realtor. This time, when we first looked at it, it was in, in winter. It was late February, early March, I think is when we looked at it. And of course, up here, you know, we have feet, multiple feet of snow on the ground, so you can't really see anything. So I said to the realtor, I said, you know, it's springtime going into summer and I said hey you know uh, let's let's we want to make a, another appointment to look at this house so we went up there and this time we could see everything the ground and the whole deal and everything else and we started walking around and we realized this place is infested with rats we didn't see that when we were there for the first time a lot of stuff was covered up you see and uh, teeth marks on things and, and rat traps all over the place that we didn't see last time. And uh, it was being, the property itself was, had been logged very hard, really, really a lot of damage, a lot of rutting out the trail going back through the property, which in the winter time we were snowshoeing over top of it so we didn't see the, the ruts and everything else. And it was just, it was really, it was a bad situation. And it occurred to me, the Lord protected us. What I took as a terrible thing, why would you let this happen? I've been praying, I, I'm trying to provide for my wife and son here, and I don't get what's going on and the whole deal. Um, the Lord was providing the whole time. You see, who was I to be questioning the Lord? Instead of me refraining my mouth, I was starting to get bitter towards the Lord. And I, I was struggling with some real serious bitterness this past year, 2017. It was a rough year for me. It was a very rough year. I was praying, and Lord, you know, I'm reminding the Lord of His Word, and Your Word says here, you know, and I had to get through it. Now I'm, I'm through it, and I saw how the Lord was leading me the whole time, but boy, it was sure rough to go through. 
you can get better as a Christian. <clears throat> but uh, if you go through a Job type of experience, you got to come out with this type of reaction. Go to Job chapter 42, verse 1. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from thee. The Lord knows when you're better, in other words. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not, things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself, and repent in dust and ashes. That's the reaction I have right now about how I felt with the Lord back there going through this whole property issue. And different times I've done the same thing with the Lord. I just didn't trust Him. And I've spoken against the Lord. I allow that bitterness to start kind of coming up in my life. Uh, the Bible says we're to give thanks in all things. And uh, being thankful is very important to the Lord for a Christian to be thankful. I mean, when you stop and think about what all He does for us, I mean, do you realize how fortunate we are right now? Even if you're in another country, I mean, Americans, you know, are spoiled rotten in many ways. But even if you're in another country, do you realize what Christians have gone through in the past? Do you realize the suffering, the torture, constantly running? Not from vile little people, trolls online or something, YouTube, that post nasty videos. and whatever. We're talking the government. The, the Catholic controlled state coming after you as a Christian. We're very blessed. We're very blessed. So why do we get bitter then? You know, sometimes when you get bitter and you come out of that thing, you have to do a little bit of this uh, verse 6 here. Abhorring yourself and repenting. You don't have to do it in dust and ashes necessarily, but I think you know what I'm saying. And I've been doing some repenting. Talk more about that as we continue. The Lord's been working in my heart. And I had a brother actually write to me, and uh, the Lord used him. Proverbs chapter 20. You know, one of the big attacks on me is, you know, who are you accountable to? You know, had a brother that I, that I uh, cared about this week and he turned against the ministry now and is unreal and he's repeating the same things that my enemies always repeat against me and I've answered it tempted to answer it and, and whatever and and uh, one of the things is you know who are you accountable to uh, well as I've said many times before you know not I've explained this thing over and over again number one I'm accountable to God number two what you're seeing on the other scene of the screen or on the other side of the screen there excuse me you're seeing me and you, and you see a few people in the comments, you aren't seeing all the people that I'm in contact with. You don't listen to the phone conversations that I have with people. There are people that have my phone number. A lot of people don't. You don't see Skype conversations that I get into. You don't see letters. You don't see emails. You don't see people that I've even met in this area. I am accountable to the body of Christ. Again, that's part of the reason why I'm preaching this sermon. Because I had a brother write to me and convict me of some things. Yes, I'm accountable to the brethren. I'm very accountable. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 18 through 19. Every purpose is established by counsel, and with good advice make war. He that goeth about as a talebearer tail revealeth secrets. Therefore meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. Oh boy. Um, I can show you almost every single one of the enemies out there that I have right now that is just viciously attacking me, doing whatever they can. I can show you every single one, for the most part, every single one of them, when they first heard about, about me, were flattering with their lips, just nonstop. Amen, Brother Brian. Oh, I thank the Lord for your ministry. and Oh, they're just wonderful. How is it that they go from that to... Big, horrible enemy exposing, you know, Husky 394 XP exposed or Brian Nellier exposed or whatever. How is it that they can flip-flop like that? I'll tell you why. 
He that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. They are looking around for any kind of little secret thing that they can get on me. And that bitterness is just building and building and building and it's spreading out. And I've been told by some of you that some of these people, uh, Deborah Gill, a uh, bitter old woman that she is, and some of these others, they're actually contacting some of you and linking to Ed Fenninger videos and, and uh, what's the other uh, guy, Kevin Zacker. Um, you know, I mean, Kevin Zacker, you know, he was a, a oh, I just, you know, loved the ministry and everything else, faithful supporter of the ministry for a little while. And he sent me this thing. He said, I think that you're wrong on the interpretation of who the sons of God are in the Old Testament. And I said, no, I don't, I don't believe I am. I think that what I've taught and things on it is right. I'm not going to split fellowship of it, you know, over it and whatever else. And he sent me this big printed out thing and I read it and I, I sent back my reply and I said, I don't agree with you, but let's not break fellowship over it. Well, he, apparently he didn't think, you know, too highly of what I said. And he starts coming out and he starts attacking me. Now he's got his whole purpose for being is just to attack me. They're tail bearers, you see. And these tail bearers, they're continually, I mean, they've got to send people in here to see what I'm saying. Who cares? If I'm a loser and bad and whatever else, why do you care about what I have to say? You see? And there's probably somebody in that's that's watching this thing. And there's no way to keep these these trolls out. I mean, I, I realize that. The rapture is going to be the only thing, you know, because then we're leaving and they're all staying. But, uh, you know... If I had a church building someplace, you know, if I decided to do that, they'd sneak in there. Wherever I go, they're going to be sneaking around and whatever else. And that bitterness that they have, they're going to try to infect you with it. They're going to try to infect you and turn you against me. I'm going to tell you that. I, like I said, some of you have, have contacted me. You, don't, you say, well, I don't know about this, brother. You don't know who I'm in contact with. There's a lot of people out there and things, brothers and sisters in Christ, that I'm getting, you know, notifications from. You're saying, hey, send me private messages, send me stuff through the mail, whatever. And you're saying, brother, I'm getting stuff from Kevin Zacker, from Deborah Gill. She's Ed Fenninger's, you know, little girlfriend or whatever else there. Um, that She's married and whatever, lives in Pennsylvania. I think Fenninger's in Texas. But my point is, they're sending links. And if they can find out that you're a fan of this ministry... They're going to send you stuff attacking me. You know why? They're, they're tail bearers, first of all. Number two, they are bitter. And they're trying to spread that bitter to you. They're trying to defile many with their bitterness. Job chapter, or excuse me, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 22. Say not thou, I will recompense evil but wait on the Lord and he shall save thee. That works both ways. All right? For the my enemies out there, don't say, you don't say, I will recompense evil. You don't have to recompense evil. If I'm evil, if I'm some kind of false prophet, the Lord's going to take care of me. Who are you accountable to, Brother Brian? The Lord. The Lord. But it also works for me, you see. See, you can get bitter to the point where you're getting out ahead of the Lord. You start to pull a job. You start to say, I'm not going to refrain my mouth. Hey, God has made me bitter because he's, he's not answering this prayer. He's not, he's not stopping this thing. He's, and you start to get bitter towards the Lord. You got to be careful of that thing. I have to be careful of that thing. It does get very bitter when you know, I, I start to you know, get bitter when I see my marriage being attacked and when people are attacking my son and things and attacking me lying about my character and whatever else I can start getting bitter about that and I can start wondering I wonder who else is a snake I wonder who else is infiltrating into it. I need to wait on the Lord he'll save me he'll save me from these issues but only if I rely on him and preach his word the way I'm supposed to be preaching The Lord's going to sort stuff out, in other words. Now let's go to the New Testament. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 17 through 21.
And I'll, I'm going to tell you right now. I mean, I have a very competitive background. Um, when I would ride motorcycle, I did not like to lose. Um, I had a lot of pride. I've admitted to my pride issues and things. Um, I, there have been times I've been prideful in the ministry, and I've apologized for that. I've publicly said about that. I try to humble myself. I try to be honest about things. There's a lot of stuff I tell about myself and what I'm going through. I don't, you don't need to know everything. But I'm trying to relate the fact that I'm honest, that I'm trying to say, I'm trying to, to reveal a little bit of the struggles that I have as a preacher. You know? I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to be real. I'm trying to be honest. You know, if, you ever, if you're ever here in Northern Maine for any reason, or if you're a local person and you run into me, you're going to see this is what you're going to meet. You're not going to see some different guy out there in the street or whatever else or we're at the store or wherever you see me. I am what I am, right? But I have a past where I was very competitive in riding and racing and things. That's why I spend a lot of time on the motorcycle testimony because I'm trying to show I'm not just talking, right? I have a lot of experience on ATVs and dirt bikes and whatever else and a lot of pride that went along with that. And when I start seeing somebody coming up behind me and things and, and they're going to get around me and they're trying to push me, that, that temptation is there. Kind of, okay, I want to race this guy. Stop, you know, don't do that. <laughs> I'm a preacher now. And that's why one of the reasons I put a lot of, you know, bumper magnets on my vehicle. It's kind of, you know, my way of keeping the flesh down, you know, it reminds me, hey, there's magnets on here witnessing for the Lord Jesus Christ. There's scripture on this vehicle. Don't act like an idiot behind the wheel. But it's tough for me. It's hard. It's a struggle that I have. And people attack me. They attack my wife. They attack my son. They attack, they, they're just lying all about me just crazy. Some of the lies that are out there about me. And, I, and I'm just, I want to, I want to nail them. I want to just, and we'll talk more about that here as we continue. And I want to do something about it. And, and it's not the Christian way. And it, oh, well, then you were just supposed to be little milk toast, just little sissies. And no, that's not it either. All right. Uh, the Christian way is we have a God in heaven that can recompense evil to people. And we got to let him take care of our problems. And we got to rely on him. Let's look at the advice here in Romans chapter 12, verse 17 through 21. I mean, this, this, I was writing these sermon notes the other day, and I'm, and I'm thinking, okay, I, I can preach this. And the Lord's saying, yeah, you can preach it, but you're, are you going to live it? Are you going to follow these verses? Uh, uh. <laughs> Romans chapter 12, verse 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. That's what I try to do. Verse 18, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. It's not always possible, but you have to try. Verse 19, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place under wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Give place under wrath. Huh. Avenge not yourselves, but rather give place under wrath. Now you can... There's, I'm sure different people would exposit that differently, but I can look at that thing and I can say, I get mad and I'll feel my blood pressure rising. I can feel my head getting hot. You know, I can feel my heart rate starting to go speed up. And it's that old aggression that, you know, used to be when I'd be on the road, it would be, you know, the road rage, you could say, so to speak. And I, got, I almost got in a couple of big fights back years ago. I was, I was quite an idiot behind the wheel, but... <laughs> Uh, I did some insane things. I look back now and just shake my head and think, oh, the Lord had such grace and mercy for me, saving me. Got kind of a bum deal, really. But um, uh, I get angry about stuff. I see things that people say about me and how people are lying about me, and I can feel that anger building, and I can just feel, and I'm learning as I'm aging, uh, as I'm maturing as a Christian, uh, I'm learning, don't even reply. 
I mean, it, it, was, it was a tough thing for me to get rid of the comment section on YouTube because I, I liked it. A lot of times I'm writing back and forth with these people and I'm just, just enjoying this, just slamming them into the ground. Stop. Stop. I need to stop that. Get away from that. Give place unto wrath. That's a really nasty thing that they did. Letter from this guy. That's a really nasty letter that he wrote. He's lying. So just put it down. Go for a walk. Looking forward to when we're living at our property because I'm going to be doing that. Go for a walk. Go on out and split some firewood. Go on out and whatever. Just go do something. But I could really write back. I could really nail them right now. No. But this person wronged me. They're, they wronged me. I know the scriptures. I can, I can get the scriptures and... They wronged you because they're bitter. Is that bitterness affecting you and making you bitter? You see, when your bitterness is there, you're going to start to think about ways to get back at that person. Give place unto wrath. Okay, yeah, that's wrong. Makes me mad. I mean, the Lord rebuked the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees. The Apostle Paul certainly did his share of rebuking. Sometimes you'll have that. Sometimes you'll have an instance where you have to rebuke somebody and you have to be a little bit rough on them. But you know what? If it, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Give place to wrath. Hey, that guy ticked me off. Let me just kind of, okay, you know, just get away from me. Go take a walk. Cool down a little bit. You know? Don't answer somebody when you're angry. Because that bitterness is there. And you'll get into these things sometimes and it just and it just turns into the flesh and you're just writing nasty comments or whatever. And you're not getting you're not getting anywhere. You're not accomplishing anything. The Lord's gonna take care of it. If you'll let him. Verse 20. Ugh, here's the real hard part. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. I got to commend a brother real quick here. Um, and that's uh, Brother Philip. Uh, and um, he's one of the patrons here. And I've known him for a while and things. And I know different times I'd have my videos up and, and people would write nasty comments to me. And he'd write, time is running out, and put a link to my salvation message. Somebody else writes something nasty, time is running out. <laughs> and he'd put my salvation message. And I'm going in and I'm, I'm ready to attack these people and slam these people. And I think, yeah, Brother Philip there. That's exactly, that's exactly what I need to be doing. It's about salvation. What's the most loving thing that I can do for my enemy? If an enemy hunger, feed him. You say, well, you're going to send a sandwich to somebody that's making a nasty video? No, no. Feed him the Word of God. Hey, you know what? You can say nasty things about me, but are you saved? I don't want you going to hell when you die. If he thirst, give him drink. The water of life... You see? But we're not quick to do that, are we? The impersonal world of the internet, we're so quick to just, we're not giving place to wrath. We're not saying, okay, that made me really mad, but I'm just going to go take a walk for a while. We let their bitterness infect us, and then we begin to get bitter, and then it's fighting and war, strife, contention, hatred. Yeah, and it's just getting worse and worse. You have to overcome evil with good. You know what I want? I want any Jesuit, any military, um, human, human intelligence, you know, military intelligence type of thing, or, or whatever, the worst of the worst goons that want to destroy Bible-believing Christianity. 
I want them to come here to this Patreon page and look at the videos. They can sneak in like the, the way that they do and whatever. Sneak in and say, all that they're doing is good. There's nothing evil going on here. There's nothing bad going on here. I used to be very antagonistic towards the police. Again, going back to the past lost life. I'd run from the police and, and actually try to get them into chasing me and things. I was a real idiot, you know, and you know, fast bikes and things. And uh, I knew guys that did the same thing. Um, stupid, stupid. So for years and years and years, I had this attitude against the police and, and I'd have, uh, you know, get into the whole Alex Jones world and the New World Order thing and police brutality and all this stuff. And I had a major attitude towards the police. And there's bad cops out there, don't get me wrong. But, you know, I've had a chance to talk to some police officers and just tell them I respect what they're doing. You know, would you want to be called at 2 o'clock in the morning to go respond to some guy that's that's whacked out on crystal meth or something that's or on bath salts or something that's that's down in the city square running around naked you want to be called to that you know domestic disputes and stabbings and shootings and all and you're the one who has to go out and take care of that stuff that's a tough job and Romans chapter 13 the powers that be are ordained of God I told an officer that the one time I said I'm a minister and you're a minister and he looked at me and I said Romans chapter 13, you are an ordained minister of God to carry out justice and judgment. I had a good conversation with a police officer, on duty, state patrolman. You know, when we dealt with what's the charismatic call over here. Uh, I don't fear him anymore. I don't have things to hide like I once did. And I don't have things to hide on Patreon. You say, well, then you're going to make things public. No. Because people, there, there are people that just don't care. They just want to come and just make, just spread their bitterness. Uh, I don't want that. I don't want that at all. But I know how I could continue this thing going with all my enemies out there. I could let their bitterness infect me like it's done. I'm not going to do that anymore. By God's grace. It's rough. It's very rough for me. I mean, I'm a man. Somebody goes after my wife, they go after my marriage, they go after my little boy, I'm ready to pound their face in. Um, it's hard for me to realize that's a soul there. And they could end up in hell, weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6. It's tough. Their bitterness can rub off. Go back to Proverbs chapter 26. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 20. Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no talebearer, the strife ceaseth. As coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. The words of a talebearer are as wounds. They go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Burning lips and a wicked heart are like a potsherd covered with silver dross. He that hateth dissembleth with his lips and layeth up deceit within him. When he speaketh fair, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart, whose hatred is covered by deceit. His wickedness shall be showed before the whole congregation. Perfect example, that, that guy I talked about earlier, this Jason guy from Australia. His wickedness. He lied, openly lied. Posting my unlisted videos from Patreon. Posting them and then saying, oh, I was never a member of your Patreon page. You lied to me. You know, you're lying about me. Openly lying. Verse 27, Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. I like that. A lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. Ruin, excuse me. Again, all these people. Oh, you know, I hate Brian Denlinger. His ministry is wicked, and he's a servant of the devil and all this. Then why did you once commend me way back when? Oh, because I was deceiving them. You mean you didn't have any spiritual discernment? 
If I'm such a deceiver, shouldn't you have figured that out right away? Why did you watch me for so long? And why does the Lord keep me going in spite of these people leaving? Incredible. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Verse 9 through 25. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that for of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. And, then when, and when they believed Philip preaching uh, the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself baptized, Baptized also, or excuse me, believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. So he was a professing Christian, in other words. This Simon the sorcerer. Verse 14. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. I've heard people say, well, I think that Simon was, was saved. He just was, you know, carnal Christian. I don't think he was saved. I don't believe it at all. I believe he saw the thing, got kind of caught up in the moment, kind of an easy believism type of a deal. He had no heart change. I mean, why on earth? He gets saved, and then he sees the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. And he says, oh, I'd like to have that power myself. Hey, what can I? Hey guys, what's it worth to you? I mean, I got some... Why would you do that as a Christian? I mean, there are some dumb things that you'll do as a Christian, certainly. I, I understand that. But uh, wanting to buy the Holy Spirit? That's an issue. Verse 22. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. Look at verse 23. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. Interesting. Why would Peter say to Simon, You're in the gall of bitterness? Simon lost his power. He lost his control over the people and he wanted to get it back by purchasing something that he didn't have. Hmm. You see, the miserable people that are out there that hate this ministry and hate other ministries and things, they want to bring more people. They draw away disciples after them. They can't just be content to say, well, you know, Brother Brian, you know, uh, I'll, I'll just, I'm going to tell you one here. Because this is a you know, private video. In theory, you know, I realize that there's people that are can take the videos and whatever. But the whole thing is um, James Patel from Ex, Ex Catholics for Christ and myself. We had a little bit of a go around the one time. Very civilized. He's a he's a wonderful man of God. I respect James and Patrick very very highly. And we had a disagreement on the thing of salvation in the time of Jacob's trouble. And I said, I think that they could lose their salvation if they take the mark of the beast. And he, you know, we kind of went back and forth on that. And I said, I believe salvation in the time of Jacob's trouble is by faith and works. Well, he didn't agree with me on that. Um, so I came out and I exposed James. I had 50 videos that I exposed. Nope. Nope. James has work to do. He's over there in the streets of England and things going all different cities and things. The man's doing a phenomenal work for the Lord. I'm not going to say a word against him. Not a word. 
And I've never, you know, never publicly said anything, you know, about this. I mean, it was in the comment section and things, so it wasn't exactly a private, you know, thing. I'm not being a tailbearer here. I'm just, it was in the comments of one of the old videos, James and myself going back and forth. Um, David Daniels uh, from Chick Publications. I don't agree with them, you know. Uh, there, there's a bunch of things, you know, uh, the, the angel, the winged angel thing. I really don't like that. I've, again, I've had brethren contact me and say, we're not doing the check tracks thing anymore. Uh, I don't feel right, you know, passing out these tracks with a false image of an angel in it that looks like a Catholic depiction of an angel. Yeah. So then I need to publicly come out and attack check tracks. No, I'm not going to come out against check publications. Um, I'm not going to do it. You know, I don't have bitterness in my heart towards those guys because I've had some disagreements with them. Uh, Sam Gipp, um, I, I was very, very appalled to hear him say the thing about, uh, you know, this, this whole deal about um, Jesus is, you know, the, the name Jesus was kind of a mistake. It should have been Emmanuel and, and whatever else. Um, you know, that, that, that really bothered me. Again, you know, uh, I had some brethren that, well, I, I shouldn't say brethren, but there were people that were writing in the comments then that, that Sam Gipp came out and answered me and Anderson. And he said about some King James Ministries thing. I thought he was talking about my ministry. And it really ticked me off. And I came out and I did a video and, and you know, rebuked him and things and, and whatever. But am I continuing? Am I coming out and, and just, Sam Gipp exposed, Sam Gipp exposed. No, no, no. He's got his own life. He's got his own thing, whatever. I'm not going to go after the guy. I'm not bitter towards him, you see. I hope he gets straightened out on that. I hope he stops preaching that. I'm not bitter towards Sam Gipp. I'm not bitter towards these people, even my enemies. You know, I in my heart of hearts, I can honestly say I would love to see Stephen Anderson get saved. I really would. I think it's going to cost him too much. I think he's too heavily committed to his calls. Um, but I'd love to see him get saved. Any of my enemies, any anybody out there, I'd like to see him get saved. I do not have bitterness in my heart towards enemies out there. But, I'll admit a fault, when they're openly attacking me, and not just attacking me, but going after my wife and my son, some of that bitterness is starting to get in there. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, verse 10 through 18. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. I thought that was interesting because a, uh, a lot of these enemies of mine, they get upset because I said a Christian doesn't swear. Their mouth is full of cursing. And uh, what? Bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. You want to know one of the reasons why I don't go out after a lot of ministries and just, just spend my time just seething in anger towards them? Because I have peace. The Lord gives me peace. There's times I've, I've come out and I've exposed certain people and whatever else. And just, okay, that's enough. You know? Lord gives me peace through that whole thing. I'm done. I've said enough. I said what I needed to say. Goodbye. See ya. Verse 18, there is no fear of God before their eyes. Yeah. Again, a perfect description of the enemies of this ministry. Ephesians chapter 4. We'll end here. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 through 32. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, 
that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. There was a very wicked young man that did a lot of really evil things. Things that I can't even tell anybody. I've told my wife some of the things, but a lot of the stuff I've, uh, things I did, things I thought, horrible, horrible things. And Jesus Christ forgave that wicked man in the past. And I stand before you here now, born again, by the grace of God, a saved sinner. And uh, i got to keep that in mind. The people out there that hate me, the people out there that want to see me dead, and there are those that too, believe me. And I'm not just saying that, just joking. I have been threatened. Um, this Rational Wiki article came out, and they actually got a thing from somebody saying, you can expect assassination attempts on you. <laughs> Atheist, you know, nice. And, uh, you know, I have to remember that these people, they all are going to be going to heaven or hell. And uh, I can't let their bitterness affect me and turn my preaching into hate and anger and wrath. I need to get to a point where I just say, you know what? Let the people, if you're a troll, come on in. Look at what we have here on Patreon. Look at the Christian fellowship that we have. See our love for one another. Our love that transcends where we were born or transcends our, st our position in life, our income, our race, ethnicity, whatever you want to call it, male, female, whatever, doesn't matter, good looking, ugly, whatever, you know, doesn't matter, skinny, overweight, we love one another. And it begins with me because this is the ministry the Lord's given to me. And I can let that poison affect me to the point where it's coming out of my preaching. Their poison that they have out there, those lost people, and the misery that they feel, they have no peace. They're obsessed with a man that they hate. And that obsession, they're trying to get to me, trying to rattle my cage, and I let them sometimes. And I said this at the beginning, and I didn't really explain this, but I had a brother... Uh, named Nicholas, I won't say last name, but uh, he sent me a thing and he said, you know, I saw your video about the the letter you got about this guy saying that God gave him the dream that my wife is going to leave me after I tell her to translate part of the Bible or something. And he said, I could see your anger and he said, I can't, I don't understand how you can put up with so much stuff and whatever, but he said, you're letting them get to you. Yeah, I did. That's what they want to see. They want to see me get rattled. They want to see me lose my temper. I took the video down. I took the video down. Uh, there was no point in that. Stephen Anderson, I, uh, this brother that left this, this ministry recently here, he said, I need to take all my Stephen Anderson videos down. I'm not going to do it because, you see, Stephen Anderson, he's not saved, number one. Number two, uh, he is specifically being raised up by the devil and his minions to demonize Bible-believing Christians. If I don't say something about Stephen Anderson, I mean, he's getting mainstream media attention, all right? And if I don't say something about him, it's going to be used and spun and say, oh, well, you're King James, well, you're just, you're one of those Stephen Anderson guy types or whatever. That's why I speak against Stephen Anderson, all right? He's, he's gone way over the line, with a lot of different things. And quite frankly, we came out with this thing. The Lord showed my wife, Stephen Anderson's connections to the Universal One Church, the Roman Catholic Universal One Church in South Africa. And uh, with this Bogart guy, this bishop named Bogart. Um, and enough said. There's the proof. He's connected to the Vatican. Done. No more needs to be said. I mean, if he comes out and says something really radical, well, then maybe I'll have to do something. But... Uh, 
So this brother wrote to me and he said, uh, you're letting them get to you. So the video is gone. And I'll show you something here. This little piece of yellow paper, you can see it's kind of crinkled up and whatever else. Questions for my viewers. Number one, should I answer the Rational Wiki article that's been written against me? Number two, should I expose Ed Fenninger or other heretics like him? You say, why is it crinkled up? Because I did something like this the one day. I took it and I threw it in the trash. And then I started to look at some of the stuff. And I started to see what they're saying about me and seeing what they're just how they're just blatantly lying about me. I saw one of some of these comments and I'm thinking, where are you people even getting this stuff from? You know, I saw the one that said I had two motorcycles. I don't have one motorcycle right now. You know, uh, another one said I have two children. And I said to my wife, I showed her the comment. I said, where's the other child at? Are you keeping a secret from me? We're, you know, I had a good laugh about it. It's ridiculous. These attacks these people come up with on me. But you know what? These questions are being wrinkled up again. And they go over to the trash can over that way. I don't care. Oh, look, Rational Wiki wrote a bunch of nasty stuff and called you all kinds of names and said you shouldn't be allowed to breed and whatever else. Whatever. I mean, it's just that thing. They can't even spell a lot of the words correctly. They're citing Wikipedia for sources and things. It's absurd. It's absolutely absurd. And I, But get drawn into the thing. It's obviously that there's bitterness there. It's not even, they call it rational. It, it's absurd what these people have written about me. Lie after lie after lie after lie. And I go in and try to defend myself to a bunch of unsaved atheists, but you know what? Those atheists are on their way to hell. How about if I uh, be kind? There. And I know it says one to another for Christians. I realize that. But tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. I'm talking about Christian fellowship there. But I'll tell you what. There's a... There's some instruction righteousness in there for uh, how I should deal with lost people. We read earlier about being, you know, feeding the enemy and, and things and giving them something to drink. So, I'll close by saying this. I think the most important way to look at this whole thing is I think we need to give our enemies what they need not what they want. And what they need is Jesus Christ. And you know, it's, I think one of the hardest things for me is when I read through the, the Acts chapter 7 and they're stoning Stephen and he says, lay not this sin to their charge. I'll give you the verse on that. I know I said I was in closing there, but I just wanted to say this yet. Yep, verse 60. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. They're murdering him, stoning him to death. The pain of that, I can't imagine what it would be like to go through that. Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. He deserved, I mean, they deserved to have, you know, God, pour out your wrath on these people. Destroy these people. Destroy their family. Lay not this sin to their charge. a hard thing to get to brethren please pray for me pray for me that I'll uh, not get sidetracked on these issues if they're going to infiltrate you know I'm still going to block them whatever else let me know about these wolves when you see one come in it's kind of funny I got to tell this story real quick here too just I know I said I was going to close but just bear with me I'm I'm on the internet the other day and um I was you know writing back and forth with a with a guy and I was doing something else. I had to, I had some scanning work to do, and my scanner is a really old scanner. Um, it's probably maybe 11 or 12 years old. I mean, it's an old one. And I have an old Windows XP laptop computer. Again, very old one. And uh, and that, you know, the, the old lap, or the old flatbed scanner works with the old laptop. So I had that thing set up, and I'm doing email, and I'm scanning things and whatever else. And uh, I see this email patron patron uh, notification comes up and it says t wolf now there was a guy a while back called todd wolf and he was you know in 
making trouble and things on my channel. And, uh, and finally, he, he made a, a statement about how that his brother-in-law went to a, he's a Baptist pastor, and he went to a Jesuit school. And he, ooh, how scary, ooh, you know, making fun of the whole Jesuit thing. And so I finally just blocked the guy. And I saw one of the videos that somebody sent a link to of my enemies coming out and attacking me and everything else. I saw this Todd Wolf, Wolf guy in the comments. Yeah, you know, I, I, you know, saying things and whatever else. And just comes up. He's going to try to get into Patreon. <laughs> and I thought, you know, I mean, it, it, T. Wolf. Who else is it? You know, I mean, it could be somebody else, but why would they not put their full name there? Kind of odd. But, you know, they're going to try to get in. I'm going to block them. But if they slip in, all you're going to find is a Bible-believing preacher doing his best to preach the Word of God to his brothers and sisters in Christ. That's all you're going to find here. Um, your bitterness, if you're out there and you're one of these people that hates me and things, um, get that sorted out between you and the Lord. The Holy Spirit doesn't want you to be bitter towards anyone. Tender-hearted, forgiving. If you have a quarrel with anyone, forgive them. Uh, if you have bitterness in your heart, you're not right with God. I have to examine myself on that. Um, so, that's going to be it for this study. And uh, don't let these bitter things that are said about me, you know, if, if you're being contacted and people sending you videos and whatever else against me, um, I can't force you to not watch them, but I just don't understand why people would watch them. Um, just delete it, you know. I mean, if you don't trust me, well, then watch the video. But if you trust me, why would you waste your time watching it? Uh, if there's if there's things that you have some thoughts and whatever else and you and you are starting to feel some bitterness towards me contact me send me a private message here on patreon write me a letter in the mail whatever a lot of you have my email address if you don't have it write me a private message say i'd like to have your private email address i'd like to ask you a question or two if it's a really pressing type of thing i might even talk to you on the phone whatever else i mean i have respect for the fact that i you know a lot of things going, but if you feel bitterness coming up, let's get it settled. See? Don't let it get to the point where it gets building up in you and then it explodes and you call me all kinds of names and you just call me a heretic and everything else when you used to, you know, love me and, and get a lot from this ministry. Don't let your bitterness get to the point where it just boils over like a pot of water and just shins everywhere. And many get defiled by it. One of the big reasons that I don't go against a lot of these other ministries and just expose every little thing I see wrong with them is because if I see people getting saved, I know the Lord's going to work that thing out with that brother. The Lord's going to do some things there. They don't have to be right 100%. I don't have to be right 100%. If I was, I'd be Jesus Christ. We certainly know that that's not true. You see some issues. Look at the fruit that's coming from this ministry. Step back. Contact me. Okay. So, that's going to be it. Thank you to everybody out there for your support. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.